Hello, today we are going to be writing the equations of trig functions sine and cosine. Now the one thing we want to keep in mind is that we have to find A, B, C, and D. On both of them, A, A, B, C, and D. So very easy to do, uh, but you do want to pay attention to today's notes. Now, what we're going to do here first is just try to recognize that this graph is sinusoidal, and that's going to help us with the parent function. And for ease, we are always going to be using the cosine of theta. Now, to get A, B, C, and D, we have to look at each part of the graph. Now, the period, hopefully remembers the period, is a distance between where the function repeats itself. Now, the easiest way to find the period is look for the peaks. Here's a peak. Here's a peak. The distance between them is called the period. Now, if we count that distance between 1, 2, 3, 4, we get 4. Now, there's four tick marks, but hopefully you recall each little tick mark is pi over 6 units. So the period becomes 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. That means the, period, the function will repeat every 2 pi over 3 radians. So to get the period, we just use our rule. 2 pi over b equals 2 pi over 3. So we recognize that the tops are the same and the bottoms have to be the same, so we already have b is 3. To get the amplitude, we're going to graph the midline. Now this looks like it's my x-axis right here. Now the, and the mid, to get the midline, it's the one that's in the middle of our function. And it kind of looks like it's right here. There's our midline. So to get the amplitude, what we're going to do is we're going to take the distance from the top to the bottom. That's our amplitude, I mean to the midline, and I just count that. One, two. Now, make sure your scale is correct. If this is my x-axis, this is the line y equals 4. So each, t each vertical tick mark is one unit. So that gives me a equals 2, which means my maximum will be 6 and my minimum will be 2. Now, the phase shift will be the hardest one to get, C. Now, to make it easier, we're going to use cosine because don't, to get the phase shift, this is just going to be the distance from the y-axis to the first peak. Easy breezy. So here's my y-axis. If I count over, up oh, one tick. So C is one tick mark. But remember, each tick mark is pi over 6. So C is going to be pi over 6. Now you could have used any number of peaks. You could have even gone backwards. 1, 2, 3. And get negative pi over 2 okay for your c value but keep it simple go positive now the vertical slide that's just the location of your midline so that's just y equals 4 and it just so happens to be our d value so easy breezy now we're ready to write our equation we have our d is 4 c is pi over 6 a is 2 b is 3 so our equation y equals a cosine of our b theta minus pi over 6 plus 4. Now, to get the second equation, we're going to write this in terms of sine. Now, we normally don't like to write in terms of sine, but it's not too bad. But we prefer cosine. Everything stays the same. A, B, even D stays the same. But what's going to change is our phase shift. To get the phase shift, we're going to look at our graph. Remember, sine, if you remember from yesterday and day before, starts at the origin and goes up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up to my midline and find out where that happens. Okay, oh look, right at my midline. I don't have to go anywhere. It's going up. I'm on the function and it's going up. So that means my d value for sine, or my c value for sine, is zero. I don't have to move. Now you could pick over here, it's also going up, and you would count 1, 2, 3, 4. So you could make this minus 4 pi over 6 as well. And you'd be okay to do that. And these are our two equations for 
our graph. 